What's going on everybody? Sean Daniel with Guitar Control here and today we're going to talk about some very, very basic stuff that you can do to kind of get started with a looper pedal. You can use an acoustic guitar, you can use an electric guitar, it doesn't matter. Just really super simple loops that will help you practice your rhythm and also kind of starting to explore maybe different solo things that you can do on top of it. So make sure that you click the link below because I'm going to tab out everything that we're doing here. And uh, it's going to sound like this. Now, any kind of looper pedal will do. You could also use a backing track to kind of just think of this conceptually. If you don't have a looper pedal, you could maybe just use like your like a smartphone to record yourself doing a lot of this. But all we're going to do is we're going to loop a very simple C chord on a, on a just continuous loop. And it's going to sound like this. So again, I'm going to loop that in just a second. I want to go over how I'm playing this first, right? So this is just a dry and true C major chord. Ring finger, third fret, A string, middle finger, second fret, D string, open G, first fret on the B string. Now instead of going, where you just kind of strum the full chord open like that, we don't want to do that because a lot of times when you're first starting out with a looper pedal, uh, you're fighting the volume of the loop and then it just becomes kind of messy. So what I want to do is I want to get more of like a, a muted. We have a one, two, three, four, and count, okay? And I'll probably loop it even slower than that, but what I'm doing is on the one and the two, I'm striking the A string. I'm aiming for the A string. If I don't hit it, that's fine. I'm just getting a lower part of the chord. For the two count, I'm getting the D string. And then for the three count, I'm starting to get more of the chord. So one, two, three, four, and. So the second half of that bar, the three and the four, and, I have downstrokes on the three and the four, and an upstroke on the and of four. So one, two, three, four, and. One, two, three, four, and. Now I'm gonna loop it. Now most looper pedals, the way you do it is you just hit the pedal once when you wanna start, and then you hit the pedal again when you wanna stop. Now I think, the best way to do this is to engage the looper pedal while you're playing. So what I mean by that is you start playing one, two, three, four, and, and get in a rhythm where you feel like that's gonna be something that you can repeat, and then get the loop pedal in the middle. Right, so you can hear, that's a pretty good loop because it's kind of going around and around. All right, now the nice thing about this looper pedal is I can adjust the volume of the loop with the dial, which doesn't uh, affect my volume of the main signal going through. But I wanna talk about what we're gonna be able to do over this loop. So before I actually start playing over the loop, I wanna kinda of conceptually talk about what we can play. Now I think the easiest way to find something that goes along with just a regular major chord loop is gonna be finding an arpeggio of that chord that you played. Now an arpeggio is just playing that chord, but playing it a single note at a time. And a cool way to do that over a C major chord, instead of playing the open strings, like you did when you first recorded the loop, is to maybe play them like this. Like that, okay? So all I did is this is a way to find those same notes in that major chord, but in a different spot, okay? So the notes that make up a C major chord are C, E, and G. And then again, like I said, make sure you click the link below because I'm gonna tab this part out specifically where we're gonna play the C note, third fret on the A string. Same where your root note is for your chord, but now your pointer finger is gonna grab it. And then we're gonna grab the next note there, which is really, I'm gonna slide from five to seven with my ring finger, C, E. Now this note right here is the same as this note right here when you're playing the chord, but we're doing it on a different string. Okay, so C, E, fifth fret on the D string, and then the fifth fret on the G string. The notes are gonna be C, E, G, C, octave C. And now I can play that over that loop that we recorded a second ago. where these notes are. All right, so that's, you know, doesn't sound like the most exciting thing, but it's a good start as far as like, okay, this is a chord, I know the over those chord, that chord, we can do this. 
Now, what I want to do is branch off into the next octave of what we just did. That means just like those same notes, but higher up on the neck. So the cool thing is, we can start the shape again here on the 5th fret of the G string. And then just make one alteration and take us through the rest of the chord. So what we have now is the 5th fret on the G string, 7 to 9 on that same string. Now, here's where it changes. Your middle finger is going to grab the 8th fret on the B string and go straight down to grab the 8th fret on the high E string. Okay? So we have the first octave. And then we can start the second octave right here. Alright, so now when I engage it again, I can play any of those notes over that same thing. And then the higher octave. And then it's a good thing to be able to maybe uh, And then really just do that until you get comfortable and be able to jump into the arpeggio at any spot. You can just start on top. You can even like go out of order, in which case it's not technically an arpeggio anymore. You're just kind of doing things in a different way, right? Let's say I want to get to the top there, but I want to slide in from a different spot. concentrating on ending the arpeggio. And I know that these last three notes really make its own C major chord. If you've ever seen like a bar chord or something like that, you could do the same thing in that area. That arpeggio is leading us into that spot. And these are just things that I can do over a C chord. So in my mind, I'm thinking of a C right there, even though it looks nothing like any, you know, C major chords you might have played. Now, all this stuff, aside from just being used with a looper pedal, is something you can just play in addition to a chord. So if you don't have a looper pedal, it doesn't matter, you can still just kind of jam on the C chord. I'm just jumping around. Just learn some super simple and basic ways to jump in and out of these. It all starts with the chord, having just a simple looper saddle. This is just a single button looper. There's all there's all sorts that you can get. And the great thing is, now they're a lot cheaper than they used to be. So, you know, for, for $100, you can get a solid looper pedal, sometimes even less than that if you want to buy used. Uh, I, I think it really is like the most important tool any musician can have because you have to have your timing really good. And think about like one, two, three, you're doing that kind of thing. So again, this is something that I think is like super, super helpful that you're probably going to want to invest in eventually. So really just one way to get you started on a looper pedal, something super simple that anybody can do on top of it. So you don't have any excuses. Get to it. Get yourself a looper pedal. We got other videos uh, that you can use about looper pedals and different exercises that you can do uh, by myself and other great instructors on the Guitar Control channel. So definitely check those out. Let me know what you think in the feedback section. And again, make sure to click that link to the tab below because I'm going to, in order, do that whole kind of arpeggio run if it helps to have a visual guide instead of just kind of trying to remember everything. Because eventually you will be able to remember stuff. But like I said, always good to have the visual until the time comes. And in the meantime, let us know what you guys want to see more of. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.